Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which is located in the city of Port St. Lucie, in the community of tradition in Florida. And today is Friday, September the 11th, in the year 2020. Nineteen years ago on this day, we may have started our day with those exact same words. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then as our day progressed on that Tuesday, September the 11th, in the year 2001, the impossible, what we deem to be improbable, never likely to happen, happened on our soil here in the United States. It was that first year into the new 21st century, and no one could have possibly fathomed that our life would change forever. But it did. We all remember, for those of us who were alive and can remember, where we were on that morning when we heard the news that an airline, a commercial airliner, had crashed into the World Trade Center, the North Tower, or the north face of the North Tower. Or if you are from New York, you probably know it better as Tower One. Many times I'd go in and out of that concourse because I worked in Tower One for a while. Those were majestic buildings. Tower Two, or the South Tower, is where um, the New York State um, offices were located, right, um, when there was a, a, a state office in New York City, as well as the Capitol in Albany. I knew the bottom of that concourse like the back of my hand, coming in and out. And I remember that morning, I had a conference call. It was 8.30, and people were trickling in from New York. It was an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous September morning, and people were late getting into that call. And the call was with my colleagues. I was working for Chase Manhattan Bank at the time, or Chase. Now it's known as J.P. Morgan Chase. And my colleagues were filtering into that conference room on the 55th floor of Chase Plaza, which was just two blocks away, but definitely within viewing of the World Trade Center. And I remember when we started our call and all of a sudden somebody screamed, oh my God. I said, what happened? And they said, we don't know. All we know is the building shook and there's fire and paper just pouring out of the Trade Center. And they said, someone saying a plane hit it, they didn't know, they couldn't see, but what they did know was that something major had just happened. And that was at 8.46 in the morning. There were screams and confusion, and I said, this conference call is over, go and do what you need to do will reschedule at another time. No one really understood the ramification of what had just happened. I hung up the phone, ran out of my office, I was working in Florida, ran into the break room, screamed out to everyone, someone, something just happened. And we all went into the break room. And that's when we watched the second plane come and hit Tower Two. Immediately, and people down in New York knew what happened because there had been a bombing there in 1992. People knew what happened. And then a second plane struck the second tower, the South Tower. And then from there, there was a stream, a stream of tragic what we thought or now knew were not accidents, but acts of terror that were being perpetrated. How can there be such hate? 
a plane crashes into the Pentagon. Let me give you the timeline of what that day looked like. 8.46 a.m., Tower 1 is struck. 9.02 a.m., Tower 2 is struck. 9.37 a.m., the Pentagon is hit by a commercial plane. 9.59 a.m., Tower 2 collapses. 10.03, Flight 93 crashes into a field in Pennsylvania. This plane was headed for the Capitol or the White House. 10.28 a.m., Tower 1 collapses. 10.50 a.m., five stories a part of the Pentagon collapses because of the fire. 5.20 p.m., 7 World Trade Center, which is a four 47-story building next to one and two collapses. It was a day I will never forget. It was a day in which panic in our office was prevalent. People were scared. I worked at that time for the ACH department for Chase, the largest originator of payments that time, most of the clients that were in Tower 1 and Tower 2, most of our clients were in those buildings. We knew as soon as I received within 10 minutes the floor structure on who was on what floor, what companies, we knew that Cantor Fitzgerald, our client, that they had all lost their lives, those that were present at work that day. How we managed to move through that day, I don't know. People were in panic that the world was coming to an end. And yes, that's what it felt like. Because that's what hate does. It destroys. It destroys and kills physically, emotionally, and yes, spiritually. It was a tough, tough day, tough days afterwards. A few years ago, Carl and I went down, we were in New York City, we went down to Lower Manhattan, and we went to the place where the footprint of Tower 1 and Tower 2 were. We went to the museum, and as I went down into that concourse, which I knew exactly where the E train entrance was for the subway, where the one, two, and three line came in, where the path trains came in. And I looked around and I saw the exhibits. In the middle of the exhibit, I broke down crying. I could not, could not deal with the grief and the pain, the hatred. And to understand that that hatred destroyed, that such evil and hate could exist, and that it was done in the name of God. I can never go back to Lower Manhattan ever, ever again. I had gone back a few months afterwards, and the entire downtown area was lifeless because the Trade Center really was the focal point of culture, of people coming in and out of the city. It was a place where people gathered, worked, ate, socialized. Everything was destroyed on that day. My understanding of the hate of humanity really became palpable. Yes, I've seen photos of the Holocaust, which has destroyed me and made me cry. I've never experienced, experienced what I experienced on that day. And yet, for some reason, we can point to that and see that hatred that another, another country has for this country, 
another understanding of God has for this country. And yet, I dare say, can we see the hatred that we are now perpetrating on each other within our country? The hatred hasn't stopped. Yet what we do have is the hope, the hope that is the God of love. The God who forgives and calls us to forgive. The God who knows the depth of humanity and the hatred that can be perpetrated and loves us and restores us and brings us out of that. Hate will kill and destroy, and it will kill and destroy the very one who does the hating, because that's what hate does. Love, on the other hand, love is understanding. Love is patient, love is kind. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's what St. Paul talks about. It's not a noisy gong. It's patient. It's kind. It loves beyond anything that we can possibly even understand. Let's stop the hate. We are only capable of stopping the hate because we have a God who loves us and has stopped over all the hate, the punishment that comes with that hate, and who has reconciled us. I especially call out to my Christian brothers and sisters. You have been made new in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stop the hate. Start to listen. Start to do as Christ, God on earth, has done. Start to do what we have been commanded to do. To love one another. And yes, even our enemies. It begins with us. And the only reason we can do this is because we have a God who loves us unconditionally. On this September 11th, look for a way in which you can practice love and stop the hate.